Hey, 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 everybody, what is going on? Serial of Jive here, and today we're going to be going over some trap bases that you can create in Rust. We're going to be going over some offensive, some defensive, and everything in between when it comes to trap bases. So whether you want to play the madman from Saw or just be some dude that's defending their home, this is the video for you. So let's get into it with a classic trap base that is meant just to defend your base or to get people in and really upset them. You're going to start off by creating a normal 2 by one or, you know, 2 by 2 or whatever you want to create. Create, but the key here is to have a foundation that is lower than all the other foundations and use a half wall to disguise this fact. Then what you're going to need to do is put a floor tile in. So in this case, you're going to be putting in a triangle floor tile, but it could be a square depending on how you're doing this. Now you're going to build your base like normal. If someone comes up to this base with a hammer or they just look at it and eyeball it depending on where it's built and how the mountains hide it, they're going to be able to see that this base is normal than most bases. But what's going to happen now is if they blow in these two doors, you put down the shotgun trap, and now when they drop into this area, they're going to get killed by the shotgun trap. The fact that the shotgun trap is placed underneath where the player's coming in in from makes it extremely hard for the player to pick out or destroy the shotgun trap and I put in this extra half wall so you can't sort of ricochet a grenade in there. The downside to the way that I did it is you can now jump on top of anything in here whether it's a box or a furnace and you won't get shot by the shotgun trap. If you don't want this to happen place the shotgun trap on the ceiling and leave out this half wall that I put in and now if you jump on top of a box the trap will shoot you. So that's how you do sort of your basic shotgun trap base. This is mostly good for defense because a lot of people are going to see this and know what's going on. Next up, let's go into some electricity traps. So first off, place your battery, place a solar panel, and wire that up. So you're just going to be wiring in the output from your solar panel to the battery. If any of this doesn't make sense, I've got a basic electricity guide, by the way, but we're not going to be doing that now. So now next up, what you're going to do, connect this thing to the battery right here, and you're going to want to lay down a switch. You're going to want to lay down an AND gate, and you're going to want to lay down a splitter. So the way this is going to work is you're going to connect your output to the switch. You're going to use the switch to turn on and off this trap. Next up, you're going to take the switch, and you're going to take the power from the switch and lay, lead it into the splitter. The splitter, one section, is going to go from the splitter to the AND gate, and then you're going to lay down this HD, I think it's HF or whatever it is. This, yeah, HD HF sensor. This one, the power in, is going to be wired straight into the splitter, so it's always going to be getting power when your sort of trap is switched on and the power out is going to be labeled in to your and switch right here so what's going to happen now is the and switch is always getting power from the splitter and it will only get power from the hdhf sensor when it detects someone we're going to go into just how the detection works in a little bit so now all you've got to do is wire up to this door pair so this thing's going to pair to your door basically to do this you've got to make sure your door is unlocked Use your door controller, set it up, just click the button to make it pair to the door. You saw how I just did that there. Now, instead of removing the lock, what you should actually be doing is putting the lock on and locking it again. And now you've got your whole sort of setup here. So what's going to happen now with this HDHF sensor is anytime it senses you coming, it is going to open up. This is if you do exclude authorized or include authorized. You can play with the settings. So you can set this up so it will either open up only for you or... or Sorry, so it'll open up for anyone on the TC or on the tool covered list, or it will open up for anyone who is not on the list. So there's two things you can do here, right? First off, if you want a defensive trap, you can have a base that's just going to automatically open up, save you a little bit of time, and the doors are going to slam shut the second you get inside. You can also lay down some shotgun traps here, so if you're running towards your base, right, someone's chasing you, the doors fly open, the shotgun traps will shoot you, but they're also going to probably shoot the person behind you, so now you can safely come back and get your loot. The other way you can do this is you can set up the sensor to detect other people who aren't added onto your TC or your tool cupboard. Now what's going to happen is another person runs by, doors pop open, you get shot. With this sensor, the distance is a little bit far, so sometimes the shots are going to be off, sometimes it's not going to work. So I recommend using lasers instead. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take two laser sensors, lay them down on either side of the door. You're going to need to wire up this a little bit differently, so let's go into just how this trap works. If you guys are counting, this is like the fourth or fifth trap we're going under. So again, you're going to wire one laser sensor up to that splitter right here, and you're going to laser, you're going to wire another one up to that AND switch. So now it's going to happen. You run by the AND switch, goes off, the doors pop open, and if you are an enemy, you're not on the tool cupboard, you get shot. This is going to just trap anybody, right? This is indiscriminate. You don't need to mess around with the HDHF sensor, tool cupboards, or anything like that. So now with this laser, like I said before, I sort of hinted at this a little bit earlier. Sorry about that spoiler 
spoiler alerts everybody um what you're gonna want to do now is you're gonna lay down two laser sensors okay and if you saw right there i just laid down an x or switch so this is going to go off if either one of these lasers is is triggered so again you're going to do the splitter you're going to wire up your power to the laser the power should always be going anytime your switch is on so just wire it straight up the power out now or power in for your laser now for the power out you're going to lay you're going to wire it up to this xor switch so you can see here I've got my two lasers wired up to that XOR switch. The XOR switch then gets laid, gets connected to your AND, and now what's gonna happen is anytime one of these lasers is triggered, you are gonna get shot. You can do the same thing with an OR switch, but the problem with an OR switch is if both of these lasers are triggered at the same time, the door will not open. With an XOR, it's gonna happen if, yeah, with, the, uh, sorry, I flipped those. You want to use an OR switch, I think, not an XOR. But anyways, either switch is going to work. Basically, when one laser is triggered, the doors are going to fly open. If you want to hide the lasers, what you can do is put down sleeping bags or something like that. So now you can't see the laser. The second you run by, though, it's still going to go off. So you see that little red laser right there that's going off right now? If you put something in front of it, it's still going to trigger, but no one's going to be able to see the laser as easy. So that's sort of a nice little trick there that you can use. It might be fixed at some point, but at the minute, it's not fixed. Next up, let's play some saw style stuff. You're going to put in a place with two windows. You're going to put in a nice little sort of two door system. And these doors are going to fly open for people they are going to go in and they're going to be trapped. So like I talked about before, put down the solar panel, hook that up to the battery. Next up, you can use a switch or not. I didn't use a switch for this one just to make things go faster, to make it look simpler, but just put a switch in between the um, splitter and the battery and you can turn this thing on or off. In this case, I didn't. Next up, lay down your door controllers. You're gonna give those door controllers some power, but first off, let's, uh, let's throw this thing down right here. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna put down this AND gate right here, or sorry, it's not an AND gate, this AND switch right there. Now we're gonna put down this HDHF sensor. The way the sensor is gonna work is it's gonna detect anyone who's coming and open up the door. So the hope here is that someone's not gonna actually see that the doors were closed before. Door pops open, maybe you've got some loot just inside, some boxes that shouldn't have anything in them. Now someone's gonna go in to get to those boxes and the doors are gonna slam shut. So here we go, we've got the sensor up. We destroyed the walls now, so the sensor is gonna pick people up. Now what you wanna do is wire out to this HDHF sensor as sort of inconspicuously as possible. So the way I did this is I wired it just right along that top, so if someone's looking, they won't see it. The reason for this is because I've got these windows in here, and I like putting the windows into something where a player's gonna be trapped, because now you can sort of mess with them, you can see their reaction, you can see them getting mad, and you can uh, have, have a good time with it, right? So now, power out, right? You're gonna put one into that input, you're gonna put one into that sensor, everything's set up. Now you're gonna use a splitter, you're gonna connect your power out from that AND gate, or that AND switch into the splitter. Next up, you're gonna take the power from the splitter and you're gonna connect it to both these door controllers. So now I'm being a little bit lazy about this, but remember, do hide these wires. So you can see here, I'm just trying my best, but it, it would be pretty easy to see these. Um, so, you know, be a little bit more inconspicuous with the wiring. So now we've got our full system set up. All we've got to do is pair these doors and we'll be good to go. Again, the goal with this is for someone to run into your base and get trapped. The hope here is that someone with a good amount of loot is going to get trapped and you can make them do all sorts of great things for content um, and to save their loot. And maybe you're going to let them go. Maybe you won't. It's completely up to you. But try and be nice with it if it's a newbie. If it's someone more experienced, you know, you got them fair and square. Anyways, pair up those door controllers with the doors, lock the doors, and your trap is set. Now set your HDHF sensor like I did before. In this case, I'm gonna set it so it detects me. Run inside and the doors slam shut. I am now trapped, assuming I didn't lay the locks because I have control of the locks, obviously. Um, so yeah, now I'm trapped inside the door, and the way this works now, some inconspicuous, some idiot just walks inside, doors slam shut and now they are stuck. If you put some real juicy looking loot behind that door, make it look good, the player's automatically just gonna run in there thinking the best stuff is gonna be waiting there inside for them, and then their hopes and dreams are gonna be destroyed when your doors slam shut, you pop up in the window and you say, hey, would you like to play a game? And that, well, that's a few trap bases, some easy trap bases to make in Rust. If you guys want some more advanced stuff, some crazier stuff, let me know down below in the comments because I've gotten plenty more where this came from. But yeah, those are just a few. If you guys like the video, hit like, hit subscribe. If you want me to go slower, let me know down below in the comments. But I try to make these videos as fast as possible. 
Um, maybe this was too fast, maybe it wasn't. Like I said, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want a more basic electricity guide, check out my old videos, my old rust guides, because I've got some of that. I've got some where I lay out these trap bases in more detail, in more depth, and it just takes a little bit longer to do. This is just sort of quick, sort of thrown at you for trap bases, and hopefully it helped. So yeah, everybody, welcome to Rust if you're new to the game. Otherwise, I hope these trap bases help. I hope there's something new, and uh, see you in game. Until next time, peace.